A very good evening to all our viewers and uh, thank you for joining us tonight on the evening review. My name is Toivon Jabela, your host. The conversation around the same-sex marriage uh, judgment made by the uh, Supreme Court last week continues. A lot of conversations are taking place. Uh, the religious people, the legal people, the politicians, and uh, to help us also still continue the conversation this night, uh, this evening is uh, Tony Hancocks. She is uh, the director of the Legal Assistance Center. She was quoted in the Namibian uh, this week saying that uh, members of parliament cannot overrule the same-sex marriage recognition, contrary actually to popular belief. Uh, thank you, Tony, for making time uh, for us. Um, give us, in summary, your interpretation of that judgment. Okay, well, um, in summary, the judgment says that um, in terms of the Constitution, the practice um, of the immigration services not to uh, recognize the same-sex marriage or the spouse of a Namibian citizen that was married, um, you know, in, in a same-sex marriage outside the country, that they have to recognize them as if it was a, a mixed marriage, if I can put it that way. So um, it's putting them on the same footing with everybody else. So if you go and get married outside the country and you come back, same-sex marriage, you're entitled to all the, the other rights. Um, you know, so so what what the court did was looked at the constitution, and that is what the court will have to decipher, interpret. Um, that's why the court is there. That's why we have a separation of powers so that we can have the checks and balances. Yeah. So, where does that leave uh, marriages conducted outside of Namibia, but where both couples are Namibians? Okay, well, where the couples are Namibians, as long as it's done outside Namibia, in terms of the law of that country, um, it should still be recognized here. It doesn't matter if the person is from wherever, you know, if, if you're looking at it from that point of view, in terms of the marriage recognition, I think that's what the issue would be. Obviously, both of them are entitled to stay here as Namibians, but it might be that they do not have the other access to the other things. If you look at maintenance issues, if you look at divorce, for example. So, I mean, it would still have to be treated at, as if it is a marriage under our law as well. Yeah. So, so does it mean then uh, in, in, in the context of the migration laws of Namibia that um, a foreigner um, married to a Namibian that the recognition that the court gives them is in terms of resident, residency and stuff like that. Um, but how about the other privileges that married couple would usually have? Um, uh, maybe it's a bit of a basic question really, but still confusing to me a little bit there. So is it only in terms of residency or does it mean that um, the, the marriage itself also then is recognized. Yeah, I mean, look at the, what the court has said is it's in terms of the immigration laws, okay, which means in effect that um, the spouse that is a non-Namibian comes into the country and they immediately are entitled to live and work here. Um, they basically get domicile. Um, that's without any further ado, nothing else has to be done. Um, in certain instances, I know that um, the government certainly prefers you to apply for a certificate of identity, um, but it is not necessary. It's just easier when you go into um, some situation where people don't believe that you have those rights. If you have the certificate of identity, then they will be more accepting of it. But you don't need it to have domicile. And if you have domicile in this country, that means you can do anything. You can work. Um, you know, you can live here, you can wait your 10 years out and then you can apply for citizenship. So there should be nothing mm. holding you back from doing whatever, you know, it needs to be done. Yeah. Of course, so, at the end of the so day, then, sorry, if I can, yes. if I can just interject, of yes, course, at the end of the day, we're talking here about the immigration laws and um, any other law that also would discriminate can also be touched then by this, maybe not through the specific 
um, ruling. But if you put it towards, you know, if you go to the courts with anything that also discriminates um, in the sense, then that would probably have the same outcome. Mm -hmm. So why then does it, this whole judgment seem to lean very much towards marriage, same-sex marriage, and the interpretation of so many people in the country seem to think that... Uh, people went to court seeking for their marriage to be recognized when just hearing from you now this seems to be more really of an immigration residency and domicile issue more than anything else especially same-sex marriage yeah well i mean if you have domicile in a country then it's it goes without saying that you have all the rights yeah. that anybody else has here. I think it's only the right to vote that you do not have. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why this is causing such a, a um, calamity, calamitous response, um, because I will tell you why. Our constitution speaks of equality hmm. at the end of the day, and it's equality for everybody. All should be the same. I was just reading through it again. Um, you know, if you look at the Constitution in Article 5, it speaks about the rights of Chapter 3 that must be respected by the government, by all Namibians, and enforceable. So those are the, um, the provisions that our government signed on to when they signed on to the Constitution. And it says everybody. It doesn't just say the courts. It says also government must respect the Constitution chapter three, which deals with human rights. And part of that chapter is the respect for human dignity yeah. and equality. And those are the, the two um, issues that the Supreme Court ruled on. Yeah. It, it's, you see, Tony, what you're, the things that you are saying here are very, very important. And they are an, an eye-opener. Um, there was a, a, a an audio note circulating on WhatsApp groups and, 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 and the person whom, whose identity I don't know and it doesn't really matter was accusing the media of misleading the nation, uh, misleading the church community and that we have whipped up, uh, whipped up uh, emotions because we are not presenting facts correctly. And this is the person who, you know, said that um, this particular ruling strictly applies to foreigners married, of course, in the same-sex uh, marriage, but having conducted their marriage outside, and that this ruling does not at all apply to same-sex couples who, whose members are both Namibian. In other words, if a two Namibian men, as an example, go to Cape Town, get married there, and they go to the Minister of uh, Home Affairs using that judgment as a basis, mm. that actually it doesn't say that about them. Mm. I mean, arguably that is correct in the sense that it speaks of um, a foreign, uh, you know, foreign spouse. It speaks specifically to a foreign spouse. Um, but I think there's, there's definitely an argument to be made that as long as the couple is married outside Namibia, there's no reason why they shouldn't have the same rights in terms of their marriage here. And once again, um, at the end of the day, the domicile is there. So the, the right to work and so on, whether whether you are both Namibians that is married outside the country, you have that right anyway. You have that right to live. I think it's just to recognize that there are it's like a civil partnership that there are other responsibilities um, between the couple and also obviously they want to be able to stand up and say we are married but um, I think is that that is actually correct to say that they don't need that judgment to come and live here um, but what they would need is recognition that they are actually a couple um, you know, in terms of other processes at government, for example, if one spouse passes away, there may be some benefits that goes to the other spouse, etc. That obviously then wouldn't, um, that wouldn't occur if it was two Namibians living here and their marriage is not recognized. So um, that's something I think that seriously must be looked at as well in terms of the actual interpretation. But the court did say it's a foreign spouse. It spoke about a foreign spouse. Mm -hmm. The... 
other thing um, then, because it is not very often that our courts um, arrive at rulings uh, based strictly on the provisions of the Constitution. Usually, the Constitution is viewed as a framework and the, there are then laws that uh, must speak to the requirements of the Constitution. And it's those laws that, that usually uh, the court would mostly rely on to arrive at rulings. Uh, in this case, it seems to have uh, been different. And, and, and it seems to have left us with two sets of regimes now. You have the, the law that has not been nulli nullified yet. And then you have the Constitution in whose favor this ruling was made. Uh, and in my view as a layman, obviously, I feel like we, have, we are now left with two regimes of administrating these scenarios. Uh, how are we going to navigate around that? Mm. I mean, it's an interpretation. That's what it is. Um, the court will look at the law, definitely, but that legislation has to follow the tenets of the Constitution. And this is where the issue is. What, in essence, has been said, if you look at your immigration laws and you speak to the spouse of a Namibian, that spouse should include a same-sex spouse. That's, that's really the bottom line that is being used. It's an interpretation of the word spouse. Um, I get, at the end of the day, I don't think that there has to actually be any change to legislation as such. Um, it's a reading in to say that, you know, the spouse is also in a same-sex marriage. I must tell you that I haven't looked at the specific law, so if there's anything else, then, then I've missed it. But Absolutely. It, it's just an interpretation. So it's not looking at as if the, the law will be any different to anybody else as it has been all this while. It's just that in that circumstance, there was no right for the foreign spouse to be recognized as a spouse in Namibia. And that right is now there in terms of this judgment. Yeah. The, the basis of the headline in the Namibian uh, quoting you, uh, Tony, was that... Um, you, you made a very compelling argument here that um, that parliament, because the impression now is that there are still two ways, especially the conservative uh, communities who are opposed to this uh, ruling. Of course, part of, part of uh, this uh, opposition is based now, I'm starting to think that is based also on misinterpretation of that, of that ruling, because I think not a lot of people have paid attention to the immigration part of that ruling as the basis, as a matter of fact, of that ruling. Uh, people think that the court is simply, has simply opened up uh, uh, um, uh, floodgates for, for same-sex marriages, but this sp specifically speaks to, to migration and reorganizing reogni uh, those couples, uh, the foreign spouses, as, uh, as having fu full rights. But there's this interpretation that there are still two ways to overturn this ruling. One, of course, uh, Article 81 of the Constitution that allows uh, the Supreme Court to s sort of self-correct, if, if, you, if, you, if you will. Or that Parliament can pass a law contradicting that, uh, uh, that ruling. And you are saying here that uh, actually Parliament cannot do that, if you can just uh, reflect on that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the Supreme Court correcting, as you say, in inverted commas, its judgment, it is so. The only court that can overturn a Supreme Court is the Supreme Court. So if in the future there's an application before it where government, for example, could go against this or what, or, you know, similarly, something like that, then definitely if the Supreme Court thinks that they have made an incorrect ruling, they will have a look at that and they can um, overrule their own ruling, which I doubt very much is going to happen. Because why? Because the Supreme Court is the overarching, um, they are the representative of the judiciary and they need to speak to the Constitution. Okay, that's it. At the end of the day, everything falls under the Constitution. The judgments, the way that um, the legislature makes law, the way that the executive continues to, to work with that law, that is all falling under the Constitution. So that is the, the, the mean against which everything should be checked. So if, if, for example, now the government decides or parliament decides, no, they don't like this and they're going to now change the law and make it more difficult or whatever the case may be, that same law 
will remain unconstitutional if it has the same premises as the one that is was in place now. So you can change the law, but if it remains, if it's unconstitutional, then anybody can go back to court again and declare and, and request that it be framed unconstitutional, which means that we are back in the same situation. You know, government can make law, but they must make law which um, accords with the constitution. That's it. Um, yeah. If, if there's something else that comes before the court, for example, it doesn't deal with a constitutional issue, that's fine. You know, then government can say, listen here, I maybe don't want to do it that way, I'll do it this way. Um, but if it's a constitutional matter, then the court has the last say. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's not possible for it's not possible for parliament now to go ahead and say, well, we'll just change it because that will remain unconstitutional. You know, um, so they will have to follow the ruling of the Supreme Court. Now, I, I understand that there's been a lot of um, backlash. I mean, some of the things that I've read about, um, I don't know if you still want to discuss those in terms yes. of the WhatsApp groups. Mm -hmm. um, they are really, really threatening. And they are, um, well, it's hate speech at the end of the day. And hate yeah. speech is unlawful. And um, I, I, I don't get it, actually, because... Um, you're not giving anything away from yourself. All you're saying is, is that this person has the right to live here with yeah. their spouse. That, you know, in previously, I mean, there are couples here that are um, same-sex couples, and so be it. It's a matter of if you marry a, a foreign person outside the country, and you're a woman and you marry a man, that man can come in and live here. It's exactly the same, yeah. except that it's not same-sex. So everybody is now excited about the fact that it is that. It, 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 it's just the wording at the end of the day. And I understand where, where the churches and so are coming from. I do. Because mm -hmm. that, that is an issue that is, I mean, I'm Catholic. It is an issue that is in all the churches. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, you know, there are churches that say it's not everybody needs to be treated equally and, and is made um, by the same hand. So um, it's it's definitely a conversation that just doesn't come up here. I mean, you see yourself what's happening in the U.S., so-called mm. democracy, <laughs> that you know, the, the the oldest democracy in the world. It's it's happening there too. I don't think that it's something that is only um, unique to Namibia. I mean, we see the African countries um, that are based that are saying you you know it's the death penalty yeah. if you get found in a homosexual relationship, which is just it, we just seem to be going backwards. I'm not sure. Yeah. And also, just another thing that I want to add to that, um, sometimes the decisions of the Supreme Court or of the court are not necessarily going to make everyone happy. Yeah. Um, for example, let's look at the death penalty. You know, we have no death penalty here in Namibia. There's the right to life. I can tell you that people will come and say, this person should be sentenced to death. Look what he did, this and that and this and that. So not everybody is going to agree with it. But that is the bottom line that our government has decided upon because remember it's them that wrote that constitution it just didn't just come from anywhere yeah. so um that is their decision at the end of the day um and you know if you talk about uh, changing the constitution it is something that can be done but it, it's a process there needs to be a super majority and it's a it's and and you know one would say don't do that because then you make it too easy to change everything in there yeah it's, it's, it's a good point that you've made on uh, amending the constitution, um, and and you highlighted in in, in this uh, article of the Namibian, you you spoke about th this provision uh, that the court relied on being um, under Chapter Three. Uh, uh, what is significant about uh, Chapter Three of the Constitution? Yeah, chapter three is our basic rights um, chapter, and it's inviolable, which means you cannot change it. Um, you know, unless there's a state of emergency, there are certain circumstances. But even in a state of emergency, some of those rights cannot be taken away. For example, your right to life, your right to equality, etc. So um, that chapter three is our basis for everything that we should be doing. Um, and that is the chapter that is utilized if you're looking at interpretation of human rights under the constitutional constitutional human rights. So mm. this is the one that we should all be looking to. I think, in fact, that you should take chapter three and make it part of the um, syllabus for our school children, because that really is the bottom line in how we should be dealing with each other. 
and it, it relates to a whole lot of things. It relates to cultural and so on. And I mean, even in that sense, same sex. I mean, there's also different cultural issues that come into to play there. Look at the right to a family. It, it says a man and woman, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't say a man to a woman, for example. Mm. Um, so you know, there's there's all these issues that are in there. These fundamental freedoms that everybody should be entitled to. I don't know. Um, it was some time back when they had the domestic violence. Um, when the laws were changed and they were saying that it doesn't apply to same-sex um, couples. Now, I, I don't know how how anyone could possibly think that. So if two friends are living together, um, you know, and the one hits the other one, it's not a domestic relationship because they're both men mm. or they're both women. I Yeah, it, 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 it just brings all sorts of controversies into that, you know. So it, it people, I don't think they must take this to heart so much. There's not much that has changed. People have had homosexual relations here for years and years and years and years and years. Okay. It's yeah. still the same. The only thing is, is that if you are lawfully married outside the country, which surely shows some commitment to the person that you love, you're not just going to get married just to come and stay here. I mean, marriage is a, is a, is a contract. Um, you know, so that's the change. It's somebody that says, right, I want to be with this person. And I want to make my life with this person. And that is happening in any event in terms of Namibian people. So why shouldn't we accord them that respect? Yeah. Do you think, Tony, that um, because one of the bones of contention is the fact that, and I've alluded to it earlier on uh, a little bit, that yes, the, the Constitution guarantees equality. It demands of all of us to be treated equally. But when we have laws that seem to contradict that provision of the Constitution, wouldn't it have been uh, prudent of the court to first declare some of these laws unconstitutional and then in order to open up a, a way for, for this kind of ruling? Because that's why people are talking about the foreign laws having been imposed here and whatnot. Of course, again, that is interpretation of some people. But wouldn't it have been a, a, a chronologically correct to first declare some of these laws uh, null and void and unconstitutional, and then you open up for, for this kind of ruling? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, for, for people to say that it's Western's, Western um, influences, there's a lot of things that we can say is Western influence. I mean, um, so religion, for example, you know, that also came from the West. Um, so I, I don't think the problem with doing it incrementally is, is, is why? Why are you doing it in this manner and not in the other manner? I, to me, if something is unconstitutional, it's unconstitutional. Um, you don't have to build up to it. Any legislation that is unconstitutional can be taken to the High Court, can be taken to the Supreme Court. If it has not been done, the court cannot of its own accord just decide to take um, legislation, look at it and declare it unconstitutional or not. There has to be an applicant or a plaintiff. So it's not a matter of just... Um, you know, of the courts just making these decisions on their own accord. What what one would expect at that stage is perhaps for the legislature to look at something and say, look, this is not how, what they think, how it should be interpreted. And then they can ask the attorney general, um, you know, to go to the court to ask for that interpretation. But the court is not just going to do it of their own accord. They're not going to deal with things that are not put before them. Yeah. The, the final question then to you, uh, Tony, is... Um Namibian Sun reported this week that uh, the ruling party will uh, summon its members of parliament and the idea, the, the idea here is to rally them to um, uh, help promulgate um, a law that will contradict this ruling. And just listening to you speaking there, it looks like they're wasting their time under the circumstances. Are they wasting their time? Yes, they are wasting their time. And they're wasting time that sh they should be using on other things. You know, I can't believe there's such an uproar about this. Why are we not going to the streets to talk about the fact that our children don't have, I mean, some of our kids have never even tasted an apple 
in their lives. But we are more concerned about that. And it's just going to mean a whole process again uh, where money is spent to get together to talk about things that is not going to bring, bring any fruition at the end of the day. Any legislation that is unconstitutional can be taken to the Supreme Court, the High Court first, then the Supreme Court, and it will be declared unconstitutional if that court judges it to be so. So now um, to bring a whole nother law into place, which will take how long through, through you know, the law reform, et cetera, et cetera, knowing that the court has already declared this provision unconstitutional, it's, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, and I would be shocked. And I'm pretty sure that, that um, sound heads will prevail and they will understand or they will see that it is not, it, it, it is not going to work. And, and for me, um, with all due respect, it's just, I, I really would ho hope that they would concentrate on something more important. This is kind of all looks a bit like posturing. Um, you know, to go out there and, and people will see and that, that my electorate is going to like what I'm saying. No, you know, you, you can't just choose to follow the Constitution when it works for you. Um, and if anything, I think it would show more respect to say, look, this is what the court has said. We are law abiding. We work according to a constitutional democracy, as we promised 33 years ago. So um I think what might actually be a good idea is, is to do some kind of referendum, not for any other reason, but for people to actually see, because I think that there's probably not as much opposition as what one thinks there is. Um, so that might be an idea, but, you know, it might uh, backfire. So don't quote me. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for coming on. Really, uh, we appreciate your time and your very informed insight. Thank you very much, Toivo. Thanks for having me, as always. Thank you. That was uh, Tony Hancock. Uh, she is uh, the director of the Legal Assistance Center, saying essentially that we are at a point of no return as far as, as, far as the uh, ruling of the, judge of the Supreme Court on same-sex marriages is concerned. Thank you for watching.